Darren. I mean, I am like Darren. I, I think we're helping the kids for the future grows in our community. And some of these kids, I, I can't imagine, but I'm sure some of these kids are either in bad shape or they just need some guidance. And hey, I'm all about supporting whatever I can to help uh, whatever I can, any kind of organization that's about the kids and about uh, getting them on the right track. So, well, I think another thing, Bill, we, we're looking at a financial statement where they they raise sixty to seventy thousand dollars and they're both for kids' sake. It, it's not like that they're not out there trying to raise their own money. No, no, no. My, my only concern, I mean I agree with everyone. You know, our kids are our future. We want them to grow up and be good, responsible adults. And this is and a lot of times the beginning of it to catch a kid that needs help or some mentorship. Um, my only concern is and what do we do for the uh, youth football league? When do they come, you know, and ask for contributions? Do we consider giving them contributions if they need help? What are you coming to? Just let me know. I'll give you an idea. I mean, I mean and, and it's a good organization. How many other good organizations are out there that need help, and how far do we go? You know, I don't know. I want to help here. And I mean, I'm, I'm certainly not arguing it's a worthwhile organization. It absolutely is. That's not that's what we're debating. I, my question is where, is for this year, we start the budgeting process for next year in the next month, and we would certainly consider it for that. My question would be where is the money going to come from for this year? We can get money out of the rainy day, out of the gambling fund. I like to take what some people might consider bad money and spend on something worthwhile. Yeah I, yeah, I agree with you, Gary. Uh, we have a process in place that's worked pretty well because I've, for years you get, you know, every council meeting you get one or two groups trickling in, and this way you get all that out of the way early. But, I mean, I, I would, uh, yeah, we, we don't advertise that we give money away. No, we don't. We don't yeah. have to. <laughs> but there are people that who need help, and I'm not saying that your organization is not a, a group that doesn't need help because it I see here you do. That's a worthwhile organization. It's a good organization. Uh, so I'd say if all we did was worry about what group's going to come next, that's all we'd ever get done. I'd say you just have to take it on a case by case basis. And I understand where you're coming from because yeah, doing yeah. one leads to 10 others. Yeah. And I understand that. When this is in the newspaper tomorrow, we have more people calling us and we need money. And I guess, like you said, we'll deal with them one on one because we can't. We can't hold back from worthwhile organizations because somebody else might want something. Do we tell the next organization we have a process? Of I think that should be put in the newspaper and on the radio. I have a question again. Yes. When you have a mentor comes in and, we do, and you do a background check on him, yes. who pays for the background check? The agency. The agency. And we do, actually, we're registered with the state. So that um, all we have to do, we have we pay an annual fee fee in order to be able to run police checks, and, and we run that through email. Well, I mean, just the thought of if they came in and applied as a mentor, and you charge them a fee, of maybe ten dollars or twenty dollars to run a background check, okay. you know that that could be a substantial amount of money actually to, to make it over the year. We and never yet, have yes. done that. We never have done that. It's you know, it's been a program we feel. You know, if they're coming in and they're wanting to help the kids and do that, and they're going to be spending money on the kids too, you know, we don't want to have to ask them to do those things in order to get them in the program. We feel that's something that the agency needs to be, that's part of, our, that's our, our part in, try, in getting them to come into the agency. I just, you know, I... I don't know. That's never been thrown out. And I don't. I really frown on that and doing that. It's hard enough yeah. to get yeah. big brothers and to big get sisters. the volunteers. And okay. you know, it's if I feel like I said, if I get half to find it, half the people to be able to participate with the, and get these eighty kids managed, I'll be ecstatic at that because it's difficult. And that's the AIM program that you're right. talking about, which right. is just an yes. hour once a week. To be able to lunch with them and getting those volunteers. And some I'm, of the factories have been very good 
about yes. letting their employees know. And a lot of those people that do get involved in our lunchtime program turn around and will go into the community program. The community program is where the more extensive interview, as Bill and Sandy have said and have gone through, but they can take the kids in their home, they can go out in the community. Where the lunchtime program, they're just there, they meet with the kids just at school, on school location. So it's a, a lot more time, a lot more of an extensive interview, home interview office, um, and all of the tech. So um, it is, it's, it's hard to find people to do that. But we're, I mean, like I said, we're growing. We have since I began. I've been with the agency for 25 years. And when we began, it was, you know, it's just, I just kept seeing more and more kids that need it. And we're getting more and more kids in the program now because these parents are, are financially unable to, you know, there's just problems. The schools are seeing that. They're seeing problems at school or, and at home and finding situations. I can't tell you how many days I go into the school office or, you know, we consult with OFC on some of these problems that are happening at home. And they're happening more and more. And that's why we think, you know, we're getting more and more referrals. Um, but we, you know, I really, I was, I was grasping at straws as far as where I could go to ask for help. And, you know, I just, I, I felt, well, maybe being city, I knew we received funds from the county. I thought maybe city, you know, would be able to help. We, we are also in all the school districts. We're in Greensburg. Of course, Greensburg is our largest program. Um, we're at North and South and St. Mary's. So it's, I mean, we are, we're covering the county. We're covering everything. So. Okay, Beth, you know, all of our council people are reasonable, kind-hearted people who want to be frugal with the taxpayers' money. And I know from their talking, they want to help. Now we have to decide how much at this point. A guy who followed the past is the max of the county amount. Well, the county is giving 4800 Part of that 4800 is city money as well. well. That's a good point. You know, and I, I... And some of our not the profits, I don't think we have looked at what the count, how much the county has given and we've given people. Yeah, I'm just saying that's a guy who used the past. For various, various, some of them, but not all. No, no. But you know, I don't think five thousand is out of line. I think that's more than the other entities giving. Part of that money is ours anyway. The yeah. cities that we've contributed towards tax dollars. So you know, I think five thousand should at least be the lowest amount. resort if they need additional money they can come in and, and, and make the request and when it comes out looking like this then we should help by catch right we know they're going to use it we know they're going to use use it 